Happy Saturday, Jake is okay with Tool for Forza, and this is this is something I'm just kind of doing off the cuff. Um, we just finished the, the season with the Radical um, uh, that went very well, and, and VR are a very difficult track. But uh, we've now hit the mid-season race, and usually this is just kind of one that's kind of thrown together, done for done for fun. Uh, well, it's, it's all for fun, but there's no points on the line or like that. Uh, and for this. Uh, mid-season or we call in between season race uh lucky has uh, chosen to do a multi-class event and with the porsche 919 and the porsche 911 rsr and you know for those of you guys that aren't in the series that might be watching this um usually what, what, what lucky wants to do is we're going to put the buckets one two and three which would be the uh and i don't like to use slower but it's it's the the uh yeah well slower it's the lower buckets will be in the Porsche 919, give them a chance to kind of run around in the fast cars and beat up on the on the rest of the drivers. And then for the faster or the quicker drivers, they'll be in buckets, you know, buckets four and five drivers. They're going to be in the GT class in the Porsche 911 RSR. So uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, just for kicks and giggles, uh, it is at Daytona. I'm going to assume it's night. I have no idea how many laps are, so I'm just kind of winging that. What I'm going to do is, uh, instead of doing like a formal track guide or like that, I'm just going to kick off a race uh i'll drive the the portion on 919 i'll give my impressions kind of what the car seems to want to do places this is mostly for the bucket one two and three guys just uh you, you're going to be working traffic so i, I think that's going to be the main thing is how to work traffic uh, especially if you're in a fight with somebody behind you how can you get through traffic maybe how can you, you know, maybe there might be opportunities to show how you can you know, you know use the gt cars as a pick uh, to either pin a guy behind you uh, or or uh, get around a guy in front of you when they get stuck. But anyhow, I'm I'm talking too much. Um, so for the race setup, uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do 20 laps. We'll see how long that takes. Uh, I'm in the Porsche 9 uh, the 919. So I'm gonna start 50 seconds back from the GT cars. Porsche GT will start up at the front, and then just to make things a little spicy for me, maybe I don't know, is I'm gonna throw indie cars in starting 10 seconds behind me i'm i'm hoping that they're going to be faster especially getting onto the oval it's you know they, they should have much better top end uh but we'll see how quick they turn out but then it just gives hopefully a, a few cars for me to fight with um but i'm also trying to max out you know we got 20 gt cars to work through uh and let's see how we do and oh racing let's go ahead and start the race off I got behind me. Looks like I got all 2017 cars. So that's the higher downforce uh, version of the DW12 Indy cars, and uh, which means that those cars are actually they'll be a little bit quicker in the turns because uh, maximum downforce. Uh, the GT cars probably won't go as fast as what bucket four and five can do in them, but uh, again, for at least for this purpose, they they're just meant to be traffic to work through. So I think one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, this car is all wheel drive, but I guarantee you because we're on the banking and it's a, it's a standing start uh, and we're going to spin the tires and the back end's going to start to drift down to the bottom of the track. Ah, surprising. Now you'll notice I take a different line through turn one there than what the braking line suggests. So keep an eye on that there. Here, here. Should be able to take this kink flat out. Very nicely. We'll see how things are when we get to the banking. I think IMSA, when they do the Daytona 24, uh, as far as 
you know, managing traffic between the GT and the, and the prototypes. I believe they usually instruct the GT cars to take the bottom on the, on the oval and let the, let the prototype cars of the faster class take the, take the high line through there. So I don't know if you guys want to do anything similar, uh, but that might make navigating traffic on the oval uh, a little less sketchy. Unless you want it to be sketchy, and then at that point, you know, all bets are off. The other thing too is, is that depending on how, where everybody's uh, stacked at, oh, I do have a quick step in there. Um, it can break so late in there. Actually, I'm trying to remember for race length. I think I think Lucky was going to run this kind of like as an enduro, kind of like what we've been doing with the Radical, where it's a 70-minute race or more. We'll see how long 20 laps takes with a quick stop. And if I'm not in traffic, at least for me with the controller, it's easier for me to hold the bottom. On the controller, then uh, then then run the run the top. Let's see Daytona. Oh, that was a little early. But yeah, the the braking it looks like for this P1. Let's see, they're taking the high line. Maybe maybe the P1 cars uh, the fast cars take the low line. I forget. Wow, they're slow. The patience there. Um, the normal racing line, GT car should move out to the left. Just wait for that to happen and squeak through. Here the kink, I'm going to back off a little bit because he's going to break, check a break there. Three laps in, I'm almost through. Well, I'm almost through the, G the GT field. I'm gonna back off a little bit early there, and I, I came. Ah! Coming to the bus stop, um, if you're not gonna be able to get alongside the GT car going into the bus stop, back off a little early and kind of coast in. Leave yourself some space through the bus stop then hopefully you can start getting back into the throttle early so you can pass them on the exit. Um, I didn't do that well. I was trying to do that. Now here for turn one, I'm hugging the inside and I'm braking right before that kink. That's probably a little late. Maybe a little bit before that. Try a high, high side pass on the exit onto the oval.
Okay, so braking for the bus stop is right just as you just as you finish going past Daytona. Curve there, the curve there, roll back in. Then usually I just hug the the green out as long as I'm crossing back onto the track before the double yellow starts again. this line. Ooh, that was, yeah, that was bad. Okay. Well, the tune I'm using, I, I'm assuming it's the, Riot had a bunch of uh, TNT tunes, I guess, when you ran the Porsche 919, I guess way back in 2019 by the dates on the tunes. I'm assuming those are the tunes that you guys will be using. So the Sunoco signs are usually a good guide to help me figure out like when to bring the car back out, you know, out towards the outside of the corner. So let's bring it up to the rear. Yeah. Okay, so for that turn one, there's a green course condition light that I'm kind of using where I have the car position, where I start to turn in for turn one. I'm still braking a little too late. But yeah, I, I take a much different line through there. I think it's, I think it's closer to what uh, the prototype guys or just even the GT guys take in real life because it's, 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 a, it's a straight line into turn one. That'll that while you're still on the brakes, the car will start to drift a little wide, and then as you release the brakes and turn in, and that gives you the, a, a nice, uh, nice turn in, then head into the infield. I think it's just me getting, getting the turn in right. track across the line, bring it back up. There's the green course condition light. Turn in, brake just before it exit. Second gear. which layout I was running. I was going to push a little bit under power out of that corner. Just past Daytona. That was dirty.
you could probably hug the bottom without any issues. Turn it to green. Oops, someone went off. Set up a little wide and maybe try to cut back. Again, you, you're going to have such a power advantage out of the corner. Gotta be careful of that. Same thing here. Watch guys coming back out and take their normal line. And I would just say for the GT cars, you know, take, take, they're going to take their normal racing line. And you know what the normal racing line is, just expect it and navigate around it. Might mean you might need to lift off a little bit, but you're, you definitely are going to have power advantage out of pretty much every corner, as well as top speed. Yeah, third gear through the bus stop I think is still best. Probably a little late on the break. Now that McLaren should start moving over. That we should go wide. Gaston's going to start moving back over the normal race line. I'm not going to catch him, so I'm going to left off a little bit early. Just outrun him on the exit, go up to the wall, and drop it back down. So yeah, looking ahead and just kind of trying to predict when you're going to catch traffic. Bit about halfway through. box this lap. Oops. Where are you going? That's right, AI goes to the high side.
Yeah, closing speeds are gonna be really high. I think just because of the oval, it's much higher than, say, when we did this back at Sebring. Now, here come the Indy cars. Right. In pit eggs, it's going to be really crazy, so just hug the inside all the way through. And again, if there happens to be GT cars on the outside, you're going to out-accelerate them out of that corner anyway. They're also going to break a lot earlier than you. That's the other thing to be, mind, uh, to be mindful of as you're you know, catching them, especially if you're catching them close to a, to a braking zone. They're going to break before you just regardless. And we're on our own again. I am kind of doing a later, later apex on, on the first uh, horseshoe there. He's going to do this as a timed race, uh, or he's going to set it at a number of laps. Part of me wants him to set it at a at a specific lap count, just to make buckets four and five. Not only have to race a couple extra laps, uh, but also have to deal with uh, the Porsche 919s driven by just the 
default AI, which is even worse than some of the driver cars. How many laps down? Field is here by the time I'm done. That was a bit late. I've been taking that in second, I wonder if third actually is better and then just getting on the power early and letting the car kind of go wide because it's a the, the, the right hander back onto the oval is, I mean it's a decreasing radius turn so it's sharper on entry and then it opens up Ooh, that's bad that's what happens when I start talking when I'm driving Six laps here, see if I can catch the field again. So yeah, be be mindful of that in that inside grass. And I just barely got the uh the lefts on it and it, it started to rotate the car a little. stops. I thought the Indy cars were going to be a little quicker than they are, but I guess they got mired in traffic.
if you do make an inside move there, just know that you may you may push wide when you take that narrow of an entry into the corner. That's why the Indy cars are getting mired in traffic because they don't know <laughs> like they don't know they've got a whole huge wide way racetrack to. Okay, let's see if I can outbreak. Oh, emerging traffic. This is going to be dicey. Ooh, that's very dicey. Someone got in the tires. I, know, I, I was going to hold up a little bit, but... Nope. last lap. on through the bulk of the, the field again. All right, so for the bus stop, what I'm looks like what I'm, what seems to be most comfortable for me is down to third, flip this curb a little bit, stay wide of the second, because that'll open the that'll open the second half of the sh chicane up, that bus stop, and I can take a straight line out of it. That seems to be what works best for me. And thinking on his own, he should be able to pull away from it. probably happen is I'll be right on his right on his tail as we get out of the bus stop. Just about. Then he's gonna get himself stuck behind the GT car. He doesn't beef it in the tires this time.
fuel and tires. Wow. Okay, so tire life isn't going to be a problem, but you guys are going to be pitting, what, every 15 laps maybe? So, but your tires should be fine. But that's that's kind of what what you might expect uh, on Thursday if you're if you're in buckets one through three in the nine one nine. Um, that was a 20 lap race. Took me what look half an hour with a quick stop. So again, I I, I don't know what how many laps or how lucky he's going to run it. But if it's if it's at least an hour to an hour and a half, you know you, you might be running you know in upwards of you know, anywhere between 50 to 60 laps so just uh kind of be ready for that it'll be a long race uh hopefully it should be a lot of fun i remember when we did this last time with the uh at sebring uh that was a lot of fun so i think everybody that was in that enjoyed it so with that uh again if there's anything useful that you know for you guys in buckets one through three that help you kind of get up to speed in this car uh great you know good luck Again, closure rates are huge, uh, and braking zones. Um, you know, if you're coming up on a GT car, they're going to break a lot sooner than you think. So with that, uh, I'm actually uh, going to go out and run some errands with the wife. I hope you guys have a good, good weekend, and happy racing.